time out uh, to come to this BOA webinar and uh, sharing his uh, knowledge and vast experience as uh, Dr. Madhusudan sir has said about him, 25 years of experience. He is highly trained surgeon and well-respected in the field of arthroplasty and trauma. So he has been a regular faculty in uh, AO trauma courses, various arthroplasty courses, and uh, he's, a, he's a very good teacher. To be honest uh, about it, I've learned a lot from him over these years. Uh, while every time I interact with him, meet him, it's been real honor and uh, to interact with him. So those who have interacted with him, vastly oh, experience. So, and I'll become other uh, panelists uh, here. Uh, Dr. Anjit sir, Dr. Ashwini, Dr. Rajiv Kumar Bhatt sir, uh, I think uh, Ashish is here, Rajiv Anand sir, and all other uh, whom I'm sorry, I'm unable to take the names, there are plenty of people here, but welcome you all. And uh, without uh, making any ado, I'll just uh, request Dipankar sir to kindly share the screen and start his talk. Sir, all yours. Thank you very much. First of all, my sincere regards to Professor Saraf and all the members of the BOA. I'm really privileged to be invited into this meeting as, as a faculty. Um, it, it's really an honor to share our thoughts and ideas amongst, amongst the group. I hope that whatever I have collected so far, I'm try, I've tried my best to accommodate most of them within reasonable time. And I, I will continue uh, periodically with video clips in between the PowerPoint presentations. Uh, please interrupt me if you need any, any more comments. Uh, just at the beginning, as I told, I'm just repeating to everybody that if there is any by chance, any power failure or net connection failure, just give me a couple of seconds. I should be back uh, with my backup setups. Sure. So with this, now I share my screen. So I'll, I'll request rest of the panels and faculty to can un, uh, mute yourself and if possible, keep your screen uh, videos uh, off so that the streaming can goes, uh, go uneventfully and all yours, sir. Is my screen available with everybody? Uh, not yet, sir. It is, uh, I think it's coming up, but it's, uh, you're sharing your screen right now. It's not, uh, your PowerPoint is I not have coming done. In. Sir, I think it will take a while. Just hold on for a uh, few seconds. Uh, yes, sir. Your uh, screen is visible. Your PowerPoint is on the screen. All yours, sir. All right. Please make it full screen, sir. Okay. I've done. So, yes, we begin our journey towards the labor replacement. Uh, a new sort of life, the journey to live on with their is on. Life is nothing but movement, and movement is a proof of life. So if there is no movement, there's no life. So with this, I'd like to continue. So basically, although it's a few meters, there will be a lot of easy students also sitting in various parts of the Bihar, Jharkhand, and I, I have forwarded it to even our students. So the most important learning outcome in today's, today's webinar will be, if I'm able to deliver, that we have to understand the principles here. It is all about principle, principle, principle. If we stick to these principles, it's most likely that we are going to achieve the correct and the best outcome every time. So my message to the juniors that do not try to be heroic, do not try to be six the first ball. So try to understand the principles of THS surgery, get it born inside your system so that you continue to deliver it every time, every time. All these principles, what it does is it allows you to follow something called evidence-based practice of medicine. It's the most and I do it way or you do it that way. <coughs> there are people who your sound is breaking, sir. Particularly... Your sound is breaking. Sorry? Your sound is breaking, Sorry? sir. There is something with your with your audio, sir. It's not clear. Uh, so may I request Dr. Samsun to to take this matter? Sir, please uh, 
ప్రాక్టీస్ you should be able to perform total hip replacement under watchful eye of yours as well as some of your supervisors in case of your junior surgeon to achieve the best possible outcome who is a hip replacement it is the person in whom the hip is not really working normally he or she requires a hip replacement what i mean by that so a hip not working it may be painful it may be stiff it may be structurally deficient all sorts of things so we just briefly go through the some of the indications uh, i know all of you are aware but just it is just a run so it's broken hip which we commonly fix it or replace it uh, i am not going to the date of the we fix it replace it. for today's meeting we will consider what are the indications of replacement in a broken hip the fracture comparison this fracture the age we commonly talk about the age but it is not just the numerical age of 50 60 70 or whatever it is the biological age that means if the person has restored his mobility and he is able to move in and out of the house and he is expected to outdoor movements for more than 6 months that means he has the potential he should be considered for a total hip replacement if he or she has broken the hip then yeah this is just a picture of the previous one so it's a distance fracture so we have practiced total hip replacement the next another common indication all of us to it fix it with all expectations but sometimes it do not work whatever it is a cannulated screw it is a dental hip screw with a supplement or whatever it is condition really works so to make it take the patient back to his or her usual shelf we need to do a total hip replacement in these conditions make sure that this failure of the fixation is not just a mechanical and it is also the infection factor has to be always borne in your mind all the time as you as we um, plan our management plan so this is a fracture neck of femur fixed with cannulated screw three or the line we can see the little line it's not possible a similar one a broken hip fracture basis and say was fake but over a period of time patient shows signs of infection temperature raised esr crp persistently painful yes open it and we find that it's it's frankly frankly infection so what we did is a two stage first stage was clock removal and second stage was uh, implantation after the esr crp was normal this is the this is the final extreme osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis of the hip relatively uncommon in comparison to the western world particularly the osteoarthritis but rheumatoid is pretty well there but yes a painful hip the person is not able to sit properly the person is not able to sit in a car or drive a scooter or doing his usual household activities yes that is positively an indication for a hip replacement that's the picture so this was another one uh, this gentleman had developed a vascular necrosis of the femoral head due to some unknown reason he was seen by some of one of our colleagues in a different part of the country and that time a fibular graft code recombination was attempted 
but you can clearly see the passage of time the hip didn't work the hip got terribly deformed painful it was virtually restricting the patient in a wheelchair so we had done one replacement and he is waiting for the second one these are the situations when there is no doubt that hip replacement is mandatory completely damaged hip due to childhood infection parents from the northeast of the country have found that something happened into the hip with some sort of discharge but they are not sure after about 23 years we do not get any records but it's obvious the head has completely undergo dissolution we check the esr crp we at the hip make sure that there is no present infection this is the most important thing to determine that whether the infection is present so we go for in this particular case single stage hip replacement this is also an indication for hip replacement as the hip is non functional this is something i called a naughty hip that means the hip was never located inside the socket parents didn't realize from poor family backgrounds the child had a limping and other sorts of problems and finally it has been diagnosed a clear clear diagnosis that that uh, the hip was never in place the socket is shallow the proximal femur is ill developed in comparison to the other side so to person demands i want to walk i want to go to school so when i operated him he was at the age of 17 so yes taking appropriate amount of consideration after discussing with the patient family we have updated so these are some of the common indications we get uh, this one uh, as i say it's a old surgery it's certainly not a wrong surgery in the days and day in some places these surgeries are done uh due to availability of resources due to availability of expertise whatever you may say this surgery has worked well but now it's about 10 years down the line the lady is surviving pretty well wants to still talk go to the religious sort of prayer and everything and and she is happy that something can be done so after a complete explanation of all the consequences complications long term outcome we performed we converted this hemiarthroplasty into a hip replacement this is no way undermining the importance of hemiarthroplasty in the management of fractured neck of femur these types of prostheses are still very much there and i will never say it is wrong at least it works as a patient it gives patient a reasonable amount of mobility even my own grandmother she was go and survive this for about 7 years after the surgery was done for the so was a hip centrally to provide a free mobility to the patient so the patient can say hip hip hooray that's what is the motto to provide our result so with this i go to my first video clip um just for the second i will i will talk through this video can all of you see and hear the video sound and the uh, picture not right now sir no, we sir. can see the ppt uh, you we can see your powerpoint but not your uh, uh, video is not coming on the screen so if you can minimize or share the whole screen again leave it and share the whole screen again i will reduce the powerpoint yeah okay and now the video should be there Uh, sir it will take it still not 10 15 oh, seconds no, it's not yet so let just give 10 15 seconds still yeah. your ppt is there we can see your ppt full screen actually but uh, well i have reduced the ppt from my end sir can you uh, just, just unshare your, uh, unshare. leave it first i think unshare yeah and now again you share it okay now again you share it all with, right uh, How is it I, now? Yes, sir. Now your video is yeah. on the screen now. Rajat, uh, speaking from <coughs> the Gopur Mission Hospital. Can you hear the I'm sound? The yes, sir. Yes, yes. So yes. Today Very we clearly. are going to discuss 
as well as demonstrate the various technical aspects of uh, total hip replacement. So, <clears throat> as we do uh, before we actually go for the surgery, we do something called planning. And out of this planning, um, there is something we do called templating. That means we gauge the size of the prosthesis, what we are most likely to use. It may deviate, but it's most likely. So what we have done is, this is the x-ray for the patient. Uh, we have printed it with 100% magnification. Uh, it's an x-ray pelvis including both hips. So <clears throat> for the purpose of the templating, we have to give the size of the cup as well as the stem. So how do we do it? Uh, first we take the cup. These are the templates in transparent plastic supplied by the companies. Uh, we match it against uh, the acetabulum x-ray and see which is the best fit. So let's do it for this one. Uh, I'll just pause it for a second. This is a message to the, the juniors no, that, yeah. that templating should be done in every single case. You should do it yourself, record it somewhere in the operation theater board so that you can match what size you may be that may become a little bit of erroneous that's no harm but the idea of the templating is to anticipate what are the sizes what can be the possible offset what are the abnormalities if, if anything you can gauge and be prepared accordingly so with that uh, first you do the acetabulum you take the age of the acetabulum, particularly the fovea, where you, where you should match the lower end of the uh, cup. And uh, after that, you go to the femur. Okay. So in this particular x-ray, we do the templating on the normal side. And that's probably the center of rotation of the femoral head, where we will uh, center our uh, cup. So this is the template. Has got various sizes, yes, and we have also another sheet. Let me see which one goes best. So, on a cursory look, to me, it appears that the cup, approximately the cup, which fits and match with the center of the rotation of the femoral head, the cup is surrounded all around by bone. Uh, so, to me, this appears to be the best fit. So that's what we're most going to use most likely and that measures 46. Uh, let's that's see. Real video, video, so 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 the video is not that's working, sir. It's not moving. Uh, the voice is coming, but it's not moving. For the stem. So again, uh, as far as plastics, and uh, given the shape of the femur, so, so these are guys restart. Uh, I think so. From the uh, template, the moment you have put the template, so you can start it from there. Size, size. There is a problem of network. Let me see. Yes, sir. Uh, the video is not moving, sir. While it shows that my internet connection is unstable, this is the that real problem. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the neck will allow is, it, is it okay now? Uh, you can hear you, but no. Seems it's not coming on screen. Seems to be the best fit. Just a minute, just a minute. Sure, sure, sir. sure. <laughs> Come on. Uh, in the between, I would like to ask Sudeep, sir, uh, that uh, how frequently do you template your cases? Uh, 
Yeah, so I was thinking uh, of asking the same question to the panelists. Initially, <laughs> I used to template, uh, say, uh, so when I started here in 13 and started operating from 14, so used to template uh, till 17, I, I did uh, all my templating, then uh, then used trauma cat for some time and then completely stopped templating from mm -hmm. 19, 18, 18 onwards, completely stopped it, basically, because trauma cat, you need to change your... Uh, uh, it is a, it's a costly software. So Ashish gave me a trick that every time you have to get a new problem email. Is, problem is most of the time vendors they will supply don't don't supply the templates. Yeah, no, no. no. <clears throat> I have templates, but problem is this now X-rays. Okay, now, X -rays, now nowadays sir, you get sir's video is there. Sir, uh, your video yeah, is yeah. seen, so we can yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you. Yeah. But the audio from your video is not there. So audio from the video is not there. How is it no. possible? Okay, okay. Let me let me just now video yeah. is there and audio is oh. so as Ranjit sir was telling the issue is definitely yes. yes, now the uh, video and audio both are there sir, coming. We can see you templating, so you can to me, uh, the neck will align, it matches center to center the stain where the uh, head will be. To me, the size 3 stain appears to be the best fit. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have the lateral view so that we could have matched, but normally one view gives you good picture. So these are the two sizes I'll keep in my mind and let's see what it actually uh, requires. Uh, before we actually go into the surgery, we should talk a little bit about some other things. For example, the anesthesia. The patient uh, is going to be having a spinal and sometimes our colleagues also put epidural along with that. Uh, just because of continuous pain control, the patient will be given IV antibiotics. There are various regimens. Some give one dose, some give three dose. So I normally give three doses of antibiotic, kefiroxim. Uh, that continues for the first 24 hours. Other than this, in order to reduce the bleeding, I also use uh, tranexamic acid, about 1 gram intravenous. It's given uh, at the same time uh, the anesthesia is done. And that's all probably we need to do uh, some uh, work before the surgery. So, as we do the surgery, one of the most important things is patient position and I recollect uh, from my training days in the United Kingdom the person who does the surgery they have to do the position although in our busy lifestyle here or sometimes I must say lazy uh, we leave it up to our theatre colleagues but ideally it should be done by the surgeon and I emphasize particularly the junior uh, PG students they must know about the position what it is, there is something. So, I do the deep in lateral position. Um, the patient should be dead lateral. There are two supports, one in the sacrum, right behind the sacrum, and another one, like an L, it supports the ASIGS, anterior superior IGX spine. Unless these two are rigid enough, the patient might tilt forward or backward, and that will change your cup version, which is going to be damn difficult to assess. So with this dead lateral position, the patient is stable, he has been covered mostly on the head ends. This is something called bear hanger to keep the patient warm. The lower leg has been stabilized on a pillow uh, with some tapes and something around along the hand that we had and we just keep it covered with something and now uh, we can see that the leg is Mobile. I will do it anterolateral approach. They must go right up to the front. And I also need to get some access at the back. So this is the dead lateral position which is mandatory for a successful hip replacement. So before actually we start the surgical draping, uh, what we do is just a proper cleaning of the leg. You know these patients are there at their home, they are old. And as they come to the ward, sometimes they harbor certain germs into 
into the, into the body. So what we do is nothing but just a chlorhexidine soap and a mop and we just clean the from the top of the idea uh, wing almost up to the mid leg. Is the audio and video uh, well audio uh, visible and audible? Uh, yes, exactly. going very smooth right now. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. So now the proper surgical draping is going on. So uh, two members are doing it from the front as well as the back. And the fluid, what they're using is 10% uh, povidone iodine. Uh, please note that uh, things are being done from center to periphery, and the groin will be done at the end. Uh, normally, I will recommend to drape, uh, sorry, to prepare uh, almost from the top of the iliac crest, the umbilical line, and it should come at least up to the ankle joint. Uh, whatever the Gauze pieces which are coming to the groin, they will never go back to the incision site. And after this, the colleagues will complete the surgical draping. So now we are going to talk about a little bit how to put on gloves. I have seen uh, people using various techniques, uh, just putting a first glove, then the gown, and then the second glove. Well, I think uh, the best, the, the recommended one by the uh, various international bodies is first you put the whole gown, your hands are fully covered, you must have disposable gowns with cups. And I will show you how to put on gloves without exposing. So this is the first gloves which I will use. I will take the left side first. This is the left side. In the gloves, you just identify the thumb. Where is the thumb? And I put my thumb right opposite to the thumb and then invert the gloves on top. So the whole hand is actually inside and then it just slides. I do it on the other side. Now I can touch. Taking it, this is the gloves, uh, thumb. So I put my thumb right opposite to it and invert the gloves on my hand. And then the whole thing just goes in. So there is no touch of raw skin with the outside of the gloves and it covers the cuff. So now we are almost ready for the surgery. Uh, the patient has been positioned, the draped. Uh, we have checked the consent, we have checked the site, and we have matched it with the x-ray. Uh, I just, uh, our team, uh, all equipment ready, functioning, everything, anesthetic site okay? Alright. So before you actually put the incision, I always recommend the junior colleagues about doing some landmark drawing. Uh, that will make life easier. So I can feel the trochanter here, right up to the tip, so that's the tip. So basically, you draw the trochanter all around. Okay. And my incision will be about, it's like a lazy J, uh, normally about 4 to 5 centimeters from the tip of the trochanter and more or less similar down. So, so it's, it's like this. Uh, this is an advice to the junior colleague. Don't be fancy upon small incisions. You must do the job properly. You need to have a correct exposure, comfortable exposure. Remember, the tissue cut electrically will feel much better than the tissue stretched. So this is the incision. We just put some cross marks so that we can uh, 
uh, match it as we close. Uh, this, will, this is going to be our exposure. So now we really start the operation. Uh, Some of the bleeding points we So the skin is done and now we are just going to give a single incision to the TFL and I will do the cut with the scissor. Just along the same length of the incision, self retainer piece. Caesar. So we have exposed the trochanter and we have the gluteus exposed at the top. And uh, now we'll go into the next step. So we have the gluteus medius at the top. What we do is at the top of the trochanter, we split it uh, at the junction of two third and one third. Two third in the front and one third at the back. So basically you can see the fat and you can put your mus fingers below. Uh, can I have the diathermy? Yeah. So basically as we lift the gluteus, the idea is to leave a calf of tissue with the trochanter so that you can stitch it later. So that's what we do. So this is more or less the age. And I just go a little bit away. cut goes along the anterior line of the vascus. Yeah. Slide external rotation please. A small bleeder, just a diaphragm. So we continue with our cut till suction. Slowly external rotate. That's it. So now the hematoma has come. You can see the blood from the external capsule is coming suction. And now I do not know whether you can appreciate the tissue which I am holding is the uh, blending of the gluteus minimus along with the uh, top capsule. So we do not go two finger breaths above because then we have the inferior gluteal nerve. So the neck is slowly getting exposed. Now I need a homer. So this woman is at the inferior border of the neck. Take it out. Another moment, please. So this 
second woman goes just behind the, under the TFL, just behind the trochanter. We need a little bit of clearance in the neck. So virtually the whole neck is exposed. Can I get a smaller self-retainer, if possible? And we put this smaller self-retainer at the top for better visualization. Forceps. So we just release the tissues little bit more external rotation, that's it. So almost the whole of the neck is exposed. Can you withdraw the hormone for a second? The reason is, I just want to feel the lesser trough. And as I can feel the lesser trough, I plan my thought. The neck osteotomy, there are templates available, but one finger breadth above the top of the lesser trochanter suits for most circumstances. So basically I draw the cut here and that should be sufficient. Can I have the saw please? So now we have a nice exposure of the acetabulum by just simply correct placement of the three homans. So this one is just over the anterior rim of the acetabulum. This one is just behind and this one at the top. So basically we have a full view of the floor of the acetabulum and I can also see the tal which is difficult to show but it is, it is clearly visible. For the purpose of the rimming, uh, we will start with the lower one. We have measured the head, which is 30, sorry, 46. So, we start the rimming now. The first one, the reamer which I have taken is size 39. So, I have placed it into the floor of the acetabulum. Now, two things here. One is an inclination, another is a version. So, the inclination is 45 degree. So, this is the angle. 45 degree with the horizontal plane and then for the version people have confusions but look if the patient is dead lateral and we hold it like this you go this way your cup remains open anteriorly so that is anti-version and if you bring your hand behind that becomes retroversion the cup will look back what we want is approximately 10 degrees of anti-version so that's what we are going to do so the rule of hand is we put it into the floor of the acetabulum and my hand remains more or less aligned, uh, sorry, directed towards the opposite foot end. So this is the one, give it a little bit of pressure so that it just right into the floor 
and it just rings. You should rim it till we get cancellous bleeding bone exposed. So this is done with the reamer 39. So now we are at the size 46 reamer and I can see that it's really done all along the length. It's tight and it actually matches our templated size. So on the basis of the rimming I have decided about a size 46 cup. Now we are ready to put the real cup. Uh, it's an uncemented one with option of two to three screws. So we have mounted the cup on its mounter and now we have to maintain our version as well as inclination. So the inclination is 45 degrees and I just make the cup a slight open anteriorly. So this is my placement of the cup. It need a few gentle blows. So I'll just wait for a couple of minutes and then give a little more tapping. It's already pretty stable. Push. Can I get that uh, thing just to see that if it is reaching the floor, the screw depth gauge. Yeah, so we just touch it and see it is right onto the floor. Alright? Wash. Regarding number of screws, one, two, and three, whatever it is, it has to be very stable. Given the fit, I am quite happy with even one screw. Screw depth gauge. Size 25 screw, please. <coughs> so, this is the first screw. sitting well. Yeah. So just for safety we give another screw. So we're giving the posterior one now. Size 20 screw please. So this is the second screw going into the 11 o'clock position. <laughs> Done. Wash and insert. So This insert has got pegs which should fit with the cup's reciprocal slots. Okay. 
so it just fits edge to edge and just give No. So we have placed the liner into the metallic shell. As we said, the pegs are matching the slots and just gently tap it. Then we check with a McDonald's or something that is really locked. Yes, it is. So basically we are done with the acetabulum. Now we have the acetabulum done, we are ready to do the femur. The femur is actually flexed to back completely 90 degrees and the knee is basically being stabilized by my assistant symphysis pubis and he's also holding the distal segment of the leg. So we have the proximal part exposed where we are going to use a canal opener. Uh, we should go as lateral as possible and people also do versions of antiversion 10 degrees and etc. I normally prefer it a neutral. So I'm just seeing the tip of the, this is the tip of the uh, canal which is open like an oblique and then I just open the canal by gently tapping the opener and take the bone piece out. that's it so this is basically just to open the medullary cavity it should go as length as possible one syringe water please start with our first brooch which is size zero. zero should go easy we have got a strong narrow canal I can see so now we are using the size three reamer which matches with our Templating. You can see that it goes pretty satisfactory. So that's what we are going to use. Uh, you can use a trialing right now, but it depends on the person to person. The beginners should use a trialing now. Uh, I can do with the original stem because that's not going to change my position anymore. And uh, then we go for the uh, final stem. So this is the end of broaching. Now we have the last number three brooch and we have used a standard neck and a head size 32 which is permissible with this system. And now let's see how the reduction goes. Gentle pull and it goes easy. I will check movement and my assistant is doing all sorts of rotations. Flexion please. Extension. Extension. Okay. And in flexion do some rotations. It will be difficult for me to show but I can see that it is not coming out. So that is the end of trial. Real prosthesis. It's hydroxyapatite coated. A size 3. So it just goes into its previous brooch tack easily. I just give a few taps at the end. Now what I'll do is I need a little bit of chips of bones to pack the area around the yeah there is a bit of cancellous bone which is from the very first box chisel which has taken out. So I'll pack it nicely in the gap, whatever is left, and then there'll be a few more blows. OK. 
Okay. Now the head, please. So this is the original head, size 32. Just a little tap. That's it. And now we go to reduce it. Okay, Partho. Take it out. Completely, completely take completely out. That's it. So, okay, please test the movements again. Flexion, extension, go to flexion, do some rotation. I can see it is difficult to show it in the camera, but I can see it is completely stable inside the acetabulum. So that's the placement of the final implants. So now we start the closure. We have given a decent amount of wash. So with the tissue first, what I am holding is the gluteus medius, uh, sorry, gluteus uh, minimus. And I take one deep bite here. along with the gluteus remnant inside, it will be difficult to see, but anyway, I just normally put one single stitch into the gluteus. There are people who does it in single layer, minimus and medius, it's up to you, whichever you are confident. And now I will come to the medius, slightly internal rotate, so that they can see. Now you can see the importance of the tissue cuff which I had left before for the purpose of suturing. This is the bulk of the gluteus medius. I'm just taking it and along with the remnant left. Just the next stitch. You can use it continuous, somebody uses it interrupted, someone builds through the uh, yeah, greater uh, trochanter of the age, whatever. It's your choice. At the end of the day, you need to have a secure closure which will keep the tone of the adapters. That is a main point of success for the person. What is If you use interrupted, four or five stitches is sufficient. And I always re-emphasize the importance of keeping a cup of tissue along with the trochanter. Otherwise, it's going to be hell of a job to close as well. You can do it. You can do it by drilling, but you can avoid that. And you can see it is a fairly tension free closure. Just hold this one. And here, the lower side, you are basically taking a little bit of bite with the tough fibers of the vascus. Well, that's the end of the closure of the gluteus. So we have just closed it and make sure with my colleague that all our counts are correct, gauze, instrument, everything. So now we are going to close the TFL. Uh, what I will do is I will just first put a middle one which makes the position easier, simple. And the suture I am using is
this skill technique I learned from my short experience at Endo Clinic of Germany where the professor I used to work, he was very fancy about doing the whole thing himself till the end. And so that's the end of the procedure my friends. Um, I hope you have enjoyed it. Um, there are many variants which uh, you can apply in your own clinical uh, setup. But as long as uh, you stick to the basic principles, good result is expected all the time. So do one technique, same which you have learned from your colleagues, seniors, teachers and synthesize one for yourself and that's what you should do day in and day out. Uh, I strongly advise that the junior colleagues you visit many surgeons, there is something to be picked up from everybody and you take a note of it which I do still now and then I come out with one pathway for myself and which is dynamic, that means it changes and that will continue to change. Uh, that's all my friends. Thank you very much for being with me. Deepankar sir, uh, are you there? Hello, can, you, can all of you hear me? Yes, now we can hear you. Okay, now I'll go to the cementing video, okay? Sure, sure. Okay, go ahead, please. So in the meanwhile, uh, Shamshul, uh, if, is there any question coming from the audience till sir loads uh, his cementing video? Is it okay, sir, yes, if we can just take uh, one or two questions if there are any? Uh, yes, if possible, go on. So you can share your screen and uh, by the time, so is, is there any uh, question uh, coming from uh, uh, audience, uh, Samshul? Yes, please. Can I ask a question? Yes, please. Uh, Rajiv, sir. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So the, Dr. Deepanka, you're going to use drain. So is it routine for you or you use, use sometimes drain or sometimes not? I, I normally do not use drain because okay. there have been ample amount of evidence that using a drain or without a drain, the yield, the result is same, whatever parameters you say, uh, whether it's a knee or a hip in terms of post-operative hemoglobin, post-operative hematoma, post-operative mobility, recovery, everything is the same. Uh, I have done my own audits, which has <clears> been published once into the West Bengal Journal. And we converge with these thoughts that drain is not really of much use unless you expect active source of bleeding. Now, I will say if you have a source of bleeding, you must stop that before you come out of the operation table. That's my uh, line of thought. Yeah, Dr. Dipankar and Dr. Rajiv Anand, uh, in your video, you didn't take the estabular trial. So you straight away go after the. No, no, or... sorry. That no. I, I, didn't, I didn't take a video of that part, or maybe the person who did the editing. He thought it's unimportant. So here, yes, I have used the trialing, certainly, certainly. Yeah, yeah that's what I wanted to say. That one was missed into the video. Sorry for that. Yeah, right, right. So the juniors should take yes. the message. Do you, do you check yeah. for combined version? Combined Hello? version, what, what do you mean by that? Yeah, anti version of uh, combined anti version of uh, acetabular cup and uh, femoral neck. Sir, I use only version, anti-version into the acetabulum, but with the femur, I will go neutral because trying anti-version, okay. because whatever you are doing on the table, it's on, on, on eye, eye, eye wash actually. You may not know that if the patient is really given 10 degrees and also in the femoral side 10 degrees, you may end up in trouble. Patients try to see it by whatever means it pops out. So 
with 10 degrees of version, anti-version in the cup and a neutrally placed femur, it works well, wonderfully well in most situations. I've never, never faced any problem. Uh, so really that, is, uh, that is also one of the beauty of the uh, anterolateral approach that you have to actually not really struggle with the version. Not, not really. Not, and you have to actually not, try and be, try and be neutral or slightly uh, retroverted if not um, antiverted so that's uh, one of the beauty yeah. of the centrolateral yeah. approach then it, and, it's or rather it is better to keep a bit uh, uh, i mean retro not retro i mean less than neutral 15 not 15 degree, 5 degree 10 degree is good enough and your right? uh, construct is more stable that, i that have is a centrolateral approach sir yeah, yeah, yeah. We are, retro, we are retro version of the cup is a complete. No, no, no retro no, version no, is no. not allowed, sir. No, no, no retro not version. Retro version. We are not talking about cup. We are talking no, of, no. I mean, version of, yeah, uh, I mean, stem. So, stem neutral. neutral. In neutral, neutral and general yeah. lateral approach, you tend to be neutral. And neutral. Uh, yeah, in cup, also, you tend to be. Tend to be neutral, not anti verted as we do it in the posterior lateral. Those who are used to doing posterior lateral approach, they try and uh, anti vert their uh, cup a bit more than uh, what yeah. people in the anterolateral yeah, approach are hard yes, yes. to do. Posterior lateral, you have to be very precise. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I have one question. The approach, uh, Dr. Dipankar, the approach yes. you, you took is a uh, classical hard disk. You didn't take the modified one, isn't it? No, no, no. Why, sir? Just because most of the, we usually do modified hardens. But uh, well, any reason? It, no, there is no particular reason. As I said, that you do what you are comfortable with to produce good result. So I am comfortable with this. Uh, I do it consistently in all cases. And uh, I, I produce results. So there's no reason for me to change just for the sake of doing it. Can I go to the cement you now? Showed uh, just hold okay, on a sir. Okay, there, there are one or two okay, questions. Okay, we'll take it. Okay. Dr. Rajiv, yeah. Sir, please switch yeah. on your video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir, yeah, Dr. Dipankar, you showed one case where uh, in your video where there was a uh, failure of fibular grafting. So, yeah. uh, when finding the femoral canal in fibular grafting, it's very difficult because fibula is very hard on the bone. Yeah. So how do yeah. you tackle it? Well, that particular case, I had done the neck osteotomy and I found it's a solid piece of yeah. bone into the into the uh, tra crossing my path. So what I did is I drilled multiple holes into that cortical piece of bone and then I just used a bone chisel to take that piece out. That it, it worked. It came out. I intact. usually do actually chisel. Usually sometimes I, I, I fear that the trochanteric fracture may happen. So I usually do is to take the smallest size of the saw and cut it laterally. Yeah, you can do that. Medially. You can do that. Yeah, yeah. As long as you keep the integrity of the trochanteric region, that's what. Yeah, means yeah. you can use bar, which we most commonly yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, Any yeah. anything so we remove it. It's, it's really device, tough to remove that fibula. It's really any tough. device to take that piece of bone out. Any device is suff yeah. suff sufficient. Okay. Okay. And there is always a chance of small, small blade uh, or reciprocating saw yeah, blade or a thin blade because they tend to break also. So you have to be very, yeah, very yeah. careful using those blades. Yeah. And and a little bit piece is left. No? So you have to be flush with the lateral wall of trochanter. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, malposition chances are very high. Yeah. Of femoral strength. So well, I go to the cementing part. Yes. Next. Yes. Yes. Sir. yes. Dipanka sir, please switch your video, sir. Can you see this now? Yes, sir. We can see the yes, screen we are seeing, not the video as of now. Please play the video, sir. Just a minute. Is this is it coming now? The video and the sound? Uh, no, not yet, sir. So let's let's give 10 15 seconds more and hopefully we'll see it. Just give me let me know because sure. Uh, we can see your uh, screen where uh, you have all the videos saved. So I should start now. I think you can play the video, but it's not coming up on I'm, the screen. I'm playing it now. 
no sir it's not uh, so uh, you open it up and then uh, unshare and share it again i think all right stop open the video yeah okay hang on hang on hang on sure Where is the video gone? Is this visible and audible now? No, you have to share your screen, sir. It, you haven't shared your screen yet. Okay, I really do not know what's happening. Uh, okay. I am share screen. So, Samshul, uh, can somebody just guide me a little bit? Well, I that the last one worked. Yeah, it worked very well. The last one was fantastic. Yeah, I think it's coming oh, up. Now it's there. Your screen is your screen has come. Just click that uh, clip three cementing THR. Yes. Yes. Is, is it, it run, running in the background, sir? I have just started it. Okay, so it's not showing up. Your screen uh, in which you have multiple videos, uh, eight of them is showing up again. So you have to minimize this screen. I think it is running in the background. Just a minute. Let me just close the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sharing. Share screen. Somehow I'm not able to see the video. It should be seen in the screen. I'm so uh, just uh, sir, open it up and share your screen again. And Please just open. leave that window only open and rest minimized uh, in the system. Let me just close even the PowerPoint. Yes, yes. Let me just close the thing also. Okay, now I just have this screen. Yeah. Sir, open the video in the background, sir, first. First, open the video in the background. In the background. Yeah, and then share your screen. Then come back to Zoom and share the screen. You'll see the video button. Video window. This Take one. Minutes. So now come back on. Uh, I have opened the video. Yes, sir. Just paused it. Yes, sir. Now uh, come back to Zoom, sir. Zoom. Okay. Share screen. Share screen. And if you can see the video window in that. And if not, then please go to desktop. Sharing. No, no, no. Somehow, where is the... Then go to, go to desktop sharing, sir. Desktop sharing, which is uh, this uh, search for the video. Has it? Has it? Has it? Or you can, it right or you can just right click, sir. Right click over the video. Is it running? No, sir. Just right click on the video, sir. Right click on the video. Right click. There is nothing working with the right click. Okay, just double click, sir. Try again. Double click. Um, I let me just all these. Or if uh, if you have the videos in uh, Google Drive, you can share with me. I can run, sir. Uh, 
just just a minute let me why the the thing what very well in the last time somehow oh can you see this screen yes sir yes we can you can see the window video screen sir okay That's so or you can simply do sir uh, start a new powerpoint put the video there it will run for no, there no 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 let let me just uh, double click yes i think let's yes, keep one 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 few seconds before it comes please up wait. Uh, yeah please wait please wait yeah. a while if your internet speed is slow then it may take time so is it coming now or otherwise you can just uh, no, uh, no not coming sir we will just wait for a few seconds more sir yeah, i please. think let's wait for a few seconds more it should come there is no reason that it should not come it I, uh, it's just a matter of speed only yes, it, the last video came so just do one thing sir copy the video from there uh, stop sharing sir do stop sharing copy the video and put in the last slide of the presentation sir still it's go not visible my... no now your screen uh, is unshared sir uh, go to my computer copy the video and put uh, drag and drop into the presentation sir just just from just i'll just call my son sure sure go sure, sir in the meantime we can discuss some questions and answer right yeah. yes yeah. yes of course so like uh, sir what's the main advantage sudeep sir what's your experience between anterior lateral approach and posterior approach like how do you yeah you know, like, so, so like, i have i have like, i have mulled over it quite a lot uh, and uh, my my practice is routinely all total hip replacements are posterior approach and all hemi arthroplasties are anti uh, harding's approach mm -hmm. how to share this video i want to show so so it's been uh, that way since last uh, almost last 10 years now 10 11 years now and it's just the way i have been trained and seen the stuff so i continue doing that uh, i have thought many a times that i will do thr by anterolateral approach because exposure is good or do my hemi arthroplasty posterior approach but i have not changed myself because see if you are practicing with one particular team everybody comes to know about uh, your stuff so i think uh, yeah. of course there is a theoretical disadvantage but it has not been proven and uh, i don't think uh, for me it makes any difference but i have to be careful in both the approaches of various stuff okay so Raji, I, have you got the video now no no sir it's it's just coming up i think uh, we have to give a second no okay. Uh, by appropriate broach and um, reamers, uh, the slot has been prepared. Sorry, I think your sound is coming, but the video is not showing up. See, this is goes almost up to the second okay, so mark. There is a question from YouTube. I posted in the chat box. Yeah, so, Ranjit sir, are you there, sir? Speak the whole thing so, right from the. So the question is, uh, Abhishek, there is a question from Doctor Binay that ideal length of screw. What key put there? Tell me. Okay, video. Put the superior quadrant for a cerebellar cuff fixation and can we take help of CM to put screws of maximum length and also correct placement of the screw? Okay, so I don't think uh, any arthroplasty surgeon uh, is taking use of a CM because see there are specific quadrants and you put your screws. and minimum is two screws uh, i'll come to that because that i have written it because uh, when dr sain was okay so now your video is there sir so we continue so with the video yes ready to uh, do the cementing technique uh, basically we are doing it on a dummy model as uh, we have done the uh, can you hear me uncemented yeah. yes so now then clear and we can see so your video nice this is a small bone model uh, which uh, we have prepared Uh, by appropriate broach and um, reamers, uh, the slot has been prepared. Uh, we have already seen the cuts, so this is the last reamer which has gone comfortably, and we can see this is goes almost up to the second mark uh, here. So that's the stem, uh, that's the depth I need for insertion. And before actually the cement is prepared, I'll also make sure that the stem which we are going to use that also goes. the full length okay effortless now the canal distally is blocked we have blocked it with a small piece of bone uh, this is just for the purpose of pressurizing against resistance so now my colleague uh, lizo will start preparing the cement uh, it comes in two components uh, this is the powder which is the polymer and this is the liquid 
which is the monomer. So Lizzo, please demonstrate. You can bring it a bit in the center. So uh, I, I just want to uh, mention again that cementing depends on temperature. At the operation theater, the cement was in the freeze and it has been taken out about 10-15 minutes before. Please note the time right now. Okay, noted. So, it will be just gently stirred and as it becomes an early Dawi stage, we will put it into the uh, cement gun. Yeah, as I was speaking, that it is the temperature matters. Warmer the theater, quicker is the setting. And we keep it in the freeze just to make sure that it remains in its intact stage. It comes out about 15 minutes before, as I have mentioned, and that's the ideal time. So let's see how it goes. You can just uh, do this. Yeah. Is it ready already, Rizu? Yeah. Okay, go ahead, the way you do normally. So as he is putting it, um, I, will, I will mention two things. That we do cementing in the uh, retrograde filling technique. The nozzle will go inside and just to suck out the air and everything, uh, we put this one. It goes right up to the bottom while the air comes out. and. I'll also show one thing, this is a nozzle which will be fitted into the gun and there is a blue wedge which uh, will block the canal proximally as much as possible. As I inject the cement, this is the way I will do it. It is mounted to the gun. So yeah, I know that people do use uh, cementing by pushing with fingers, but uh, it's always recommended to do it with the gun. So in my watch, it is roughly around two minutes. So then I can just have another minute. So for all practical purpose, with the theater temperature kept around say 18 to 20 degrees, uh, normally by two to three minutes, the cement is ready for injection and then we hold it with uh, finger pressure, that's it. So now he has handed it over to me and I will hold it ready uh, till it is ready for injection. So as I say that I'll do it into the retrograde technique. So push it as much as possible, pressurize it with the which and then I just inject and it slowly withdraws well at the end to some extent you need to use your fingers no harm into that the canal is almost full Hold, I will take a little bit more and now I just in a normal situation you will be seeing that blood and air bubbling out from here so I withdraw it and I can put a little bit cement I think that's enough so now normally what I will do is we will just use our thumb to hold it, you will feel a bit of pressure, yeah, maybe just we wait a minute and then we uh, inject, uh, sorry, we use the stem, well for the purpose of demonstration I will be using just a trial stem and once I have gone into the depth we will withdraw the thing, so <clears throat> As you enter, uh, remember where your lateral wall is, that's where it should graze. So just push from right into the center. If you have done the broaching well, it should go smooth and simple. 
you might need a little bit of hammering at the end. Can I just get that scissor please? So this is just to squeeze. I am not sure that if it is possible to focus we have gone up to the depth so that the second hole is there right at the margin of the neck. So I've gone into the appropriate thing. Cement is like a cake and then you dismantle the stuff. Okay, then there are commercially available pushers and sometimes people use it. I have seen many times that the people put the head and go for a reduction which I will certainly not recommend uh, because all these movements will cause micro motion and that will cause loosening. Um, best is to hold it stand still. Now one thing I'd like to show, please leave it on my hands. Into the, uh, the canal is fully occluded with cement both below the neck as well as at the top of the neck. Okay. Is very clearly demonstrable here. Uh, that's what we should do, hold it in motionless position. If you have gone up to the right depth, then the tip of the trochanter along with the center of the femoral head should be parallel. Uh, just hold it for a few more minutes and your stem is cemented well. Thank you. Very nice. Yeah. So that's the cementing part. Um, now I will go back to my PowerPoint. Um, so sir. Uh, yes, please. Ask some questions, sir. Sir, like yes. what's your criteria of doing cemented THR versus uh, like uncemented THR? Is it only the age or like what do you see and you know? Like look. Cemented THR is more of technique. You need to be very precise for the technique of the cementing, which is an art. You have to do this very, very accurately in terms of temperature, pressurization, holding the cement motionless, et cetera, et cetera. There is no hard evidence still that the cemented is inferior or the uncemented is superior to the cemented one. If you follow the studies of the Swedish registry, the New Zealand registry, the Australian, the cemented is performing fabulous results, 30, 40 years follow up. But just sometimes we also get carried over. We learn new things and try to implement new things. And obviously in terms of technique, the cement needs more precision and we are becoming more and more T20 players nowadays. We do not want to have that patience. That's why we jump into the uncemented very soon. But truly speaking, it's entirely your call, even for a younger patients, even for a younger patient, because there are 40, 42 years of results are available from the Swedish hip registry with Exeter's uh, cemented hips. So if you have learned the training properly, if you can reproduce it, please do it. All right. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So basically these are some of the, just the points to emphasize. Um, I will go back to screen share. So these are just some of the diagrammatic things which uh, I wanted for the junior colleagues to see. They plan uh, your the PPT is visible, sir. Yeah. You can go back. Yeah. Now there is no, I mean, it's only my what I'm speaking. So it's for the junior colleagues that where exactly the neck osteotomy should be done. As I was doing during the real surgery, I have mentioned it was not possible to show you properly. So I've just done these pictures. So one finger breadth above the lesser trochanter, that's where your neck osteotomy should be. It's a very, very important technical landmark you should be, you should be knowing. Uh, filling the cup or placement of the cup, we talk in antiversion, retroversion, this and that. But look, for all practical purpose, when you place your trial cup, be it a cemented, be it an uncemented, 
try to just see and gauge from all around that it is equally covered with the bone from all, all areas, uh, from all sides. If that is so, you know that your position is corrected. This holds true for a cemented cup as well as an uncemented cup. That's how it should look like. So this is just a picture. How do you spread the cement when you do a cementing? You take a 20 gram of cement uh, when it is just not sticking to your gloves, uh, make it like a dough and, and put it right into the floor and start spreading and squeezing it so that the cement goes cancellous bony interfaces. That's where the cement must penetrate to have a very, very secure fixation. So these are a few technical tips which you must follow if you really want to do the cementing ones. So this is for the neck cut, uh, where exactly the lateral end should be. Uh, it should be very, very lateral and you must place your fingers just below the flare of the less uh, greater trochanter so that you know that your age of the cutting osteotome is almost in line with the lateral cortex of the medullary canal. Because if it is too medial, we'll end up with something called the varus placement of the hip, which is no good. Too much of lateral, you might end up with valgus placement, which will cause thigh pain. So these are just some of the diagrammatic landmarks. It's very difficult to draw these things during the actual surgery. So I just took a piece of saw bone and did this for you. Uh, broaching and placement of the implants. Actually, I should show you this one. Uh, there are three holes in the brooch and the corresponding holes in the main implants. This is very important to set your limb length as well as the offset. This is something you must be very well versed according to the company guidelines which are provided in terms of brochures or PDF files. Your brooch should be going, the second one is called the optimum one, which should be flush with the neck osteotomy. And in most situations, that will give you the accurate length provided you have cut the neck osteotomy well, as well as the offset. And when you do the smooth stem things, most of the versions which are available in the market will have similar markings and you must be able to match those as you place the real implant. Then only you get the correct limb length as well as the offset. And those two are most important to determine the tension in the gluteus muscles, the, the abductors, which will give you the stability, correction of the abductor lurch and a proper gait. So this is very important for the juniors to make, make sure that they do the right things. So with this, well, now I can take some questions and uh, well, let me just uh, show you some uh, pictures in the post up period. Uh, this is something I use routinely. Uh, we have a rubber wedge uh, to keep the leg like a V uh, in a post up period, which is the safest position. Uh, I just made it with a, with a piece of foam from a local sofa shop. Uh, just uh, wrap it with a water resistant rexine, which can be cleaned and washed. And there are some straps or you can even use a crepe. And that is used routinely for all my cases during the post-op days. And I advise these patients, they, if they can make it, it's fine. If not, at least they can have a big round pillow, which should be placed in between the legs as they go home. I can advise them to turn on both sides. I have no hesitations and even turning on the same side as well on the opposite side, as long as that big round pillow is there, which is the safest. When they sit on the chair, I always say that your legs again should be in a V fashion so that the lateral thigh touches the chair handles. That makes the V again during the sitting posture. These are few important tricks which you should incorporate into the mind of the patients as well as the family members because these are, these are the precautions to prevent dislocation of the hip. So this should be instructed. So I normally go for an early full weight bearing rehab for cemented as well as uncemented. Many, many, many times I hear this question, that how long the bed rest ducks up? I said, no bed rest and patient, patients get surprised. I said, no, you will walk back to your house. You will walk up the stairs. You do not need any help. And actually you can walk in your garden the very next day. So I make take them out of the bed within the very second day. Sometimes of course, if the ladies, they are too feeble, okay. For the purpose of the pain, you give one more day, but everything has to be completed. That means walking 30, 40 feet in a corridor, going at least 10 to 11 steps in the stairs and also able to sit and get up from a commode. I advise them that when you, 
when you tell the patient that what should be the height of the commode, normally the commodes which are available in the market is 19 inches. And I say that you just ask them to put a wooden platform or a brick platform to make it 23 inches. If that is not possible, buy a new commode chair. So these are the advices I give to patients for prevention of bad postures or unscientific postures, which might end up with a dislocation. So yes, now I can again take some questions if you have. Thank you, sir. Uh, so I think there was a question uh, in the chat box about how long should be your screws and how many screws do you put and uh, where do you put it? Well, in the uncemented acetabular cup, I believe you mean. Yes, yes, of course. Okay. Well, normally, <clears throat> the, the first important thing is the cup as you place into the acetabulum, it must, it must yes. reach the bottom. And that you check with a small, the depth gauge, the central one, which is normally kept for this purpose that it is touching the, um, uh, the floor. Yeah. And then once it has touched the floor, you are very secure in order to prevent rotation. In most situations, I will say two screws are sufficient. I normally prefer the screws, suppose if I'm looking from, from the face, at one o'clock and the 11 o'clock position because the one o'clock position screw provide, provided the cup is placed really well. It gives a long screw of around 25 millimeter. I measure it. In most situations, it's around 25 to 30 and the back screw, which is at 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock, it's normally around 20. So with these two screws, you get an absolute stability. Exceptional situations, I have come out with one, but for the purpose of training to the juniors, I will say go for two. No compromise. Yeah, so because uh, the rotation will be blocked if you are at all using the screws. The idea is to prevent the rotation of the cup inadvertently till it till it incorporates into the native bone. And one screw is a big no no, and minimum of two screws. And there are uh, times when you have minimum two screws. Yeah. So, minimum sir, two I, screws. so can I ask a question, sir? Please. Like, yes, Abhishek, please go ahead. Is, sir, is there any difference in the reaming technique? between you know, like cemented and uncemented uh, total hip replacement and like suppose the head size is of 46 then like from what size you start and what like what is your first size you start with your reaming and what is the position of the reamer which you use you know like in the first reaming okay so well what is the purpose of the reaming the purpose of the reaming of the acetabulum is produce a bleedy cancellous bone all around to get incorporation of the uncemented cup as well as the cement. So we have to achieve this all around. The first trimmer normally you take a relatively smaller one because we have the foveal gap at the very bottom and normally it is covered with a thick fibrous tissue. So if you really take a say 44 or something that will not go into it. So in order to flatten that depression in the very center part of the acetabulum, normally you start with 39, in most of the situations, 39, 37, 41. These are the, these are the starting reamers. Once you have done this, you will find that this, this elevation has flattened and now you can go for the higher ones. As you said, what position? The position as I had showed you, inclination 45 degree and antiversion of 10 degree. Depending on your thickness of the bone, depending on all parameters, you might have an you might have a thought of medializing the cup in order to make the abductor mechanisms uh, efficient. But I will say that do not go too far because in our Indian, particularly the women, I have seen that in attempt to do medialization, we have breached, and sometimes it's a very thin shell of cortical bone. So I really do not attempt to go too far medial. Only the first streamer, I just attempt to be flat on the on the uh, cortical bone surface, and after that, I just concentrate on reaming progressively the peripheries. How far you should ream? Again, that depends on the company. For the cemented ones, whatever the size of the cup you have decided, you must keep two millimeter of mantle. So if you have a 43, 43 cup, you're going to say. So normally you need to ream probably up to 47. So we have two millimeter reamings all around, two millimeter of uh, cement all around. 
regarding the uncemented, the company have specifications. I will not name any particular companies, but there are in which you rim up to say 50, which is ideal for jamming a 52 cup. And then also you have companies which have a 50 rimmer and you put a 50 cup, like in this particular case, you have seen I have rimmed up to 46 and a 46 cup has been uh, tightly fit into. So this is something you not just need to follow the company specification. So I want to ask a question. Yes, yeah. Dr. Rohit Boss, please. Uh, thank you very much. So I wanted to ask that many a time uh, there is a lot of osteosclerosis while reaming. So even after uh, reaming, say for many times and for a long period of time, we don't get that uh, cancellous bed in uh, such uh, in a few patients. A lot of patients who are having sclerosis, peri uh, joint sclerosis, peri articular sclerosis. So a lot of times we don't get that uh, bleeding surface and uh, what we are looking for. I know what you mean. Yeah. In these situations, probably the reamer is not sharp enough. I had these problems in, in the beginning of times and I have seen the companies which sometimes they provide the reamers that has been used hundreds of times and it hardly scrapes anything. So first of all, check your reamers. Normally a reamer provided by the companies is good for about a certain number of cases, but you know, in our country, everything runs. They just continue to use it till somebody just really throws it on the floor. So make sure that your reamer is sharp enough. Number one. Number two is, if the reamer is not sharp, you know what happens as you're putting more pressure, you are actually breaking the subchondral calcineous bone and pressing the cortical bone onto it. So you will never, never actually take out that cortical bony shell to expose the cancellous surface. The cavity is, is going to be deeper and deeper and deeper with your axial pressure. So in these situations, it is the sharpness of the reamer and probably it is the first reamer is the most important because if the first trimmer opens up the cancellous bone and the second, third, ultimately course it out, course it out. So that's how I, uh, yeah, Sudhi, if you want to say something. Yeah, so Malab, if you are really stuck into the situation when you're given a bad reamer and you can't uh, get a new set, so I'll, I'll, which we all have faced in the earlier part of our careers, then small gently uh, make some uh, uh, cuts with an osteotome just gentle few cuts in the osteotome so that your blunt reamer can bite. So that's one thing that uh, I have done in the past since uh, uh, an earlier days that small gentle nicks in the uh, sclerotic part so that your blunt reamer can now take a bite into it. And once that, as Sir said, once the first uh, layer is gone, then there is no exactly. bigger issue once reaming. But yes, your question was very valid actually to the younger colleagues who will be getting the worst set in the available in the town. <laughs> so deep, uh, here, here at so deep, Patna, most yes. of the time reamers are blunt. Yes. Sir. Uh, sir, one question. Sashikant, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, yeah. Sashikant, please. Uh, yeah. Regarding a question asked by Rohit sir, uh, it's well explained that many times, like post tuberculosis cases, uh, where uh, to, uh, anti tuberculosis treatment has been completed, or uh, in cases uh, of uh, say avian. Uh, where we know that sclerosis was there. So even despite having good quality reamer, we are right. having problem of that bleeding uh, surfaces. Uh, and in that case, is, uh, I suppose uh, that coating of uh, what we say cup matters, which helps in osteointegration. So it's, uh, I think, well described that sclerosis is a known problem. And many times it happens that even despite having best of effort and best of uh, <laughs> instrument, we can have... Uh, non bleeding surfaces correct and correct in those cases yeah yes, and in yes, those cases course. that classical cup which we are using correct uh, doesn't cost you integrate and for those we have to uh, opt for uh, that coating uh, where of you integrate yeah, so in in yeah. these cases Probably, you yeah. have to have two things low threshold for cementing so that is very very uh, very important that you need to have a low threshold to cement those cups that is very yeah. important that if yeah. you are not getting a good quality bleeding, then you need to check your blood pressure with your anesthetist as well. If your mean blood pressure is too low, then the patient will not uh, ooze also. So that yeah. is another issue. 
so these things need to be checked low keep low and then if you really want to go uncemented you and you have planned well in advance and you can go with a higher quality cup like gripson uh, cup and a better yeah. uh, uh, surfaced cup rather than your routine uh, grit blasted club so grit blasted club cups will definitely not work if the bleeding is not good so my take will be check with the uh, NS- sorry yes uh, deepak sir no question no question okay sir well at the end of the day whatever cup you have whatever system of fixation you have cemented uncemented grit blasted etc etc the bottom line should be having a bleedy bony surface bleedy cancellous bony surface if that is achieved cemented uncemented everything will work so you must work hard to get this cone that i have to have a bleedy cancellous bony surface check your rimmers follow whatever techniques you have i will say do not rely on the implant to provide you stability you more rely on your own surgical techniques to have the stability an implant will fail by any means no no coating no blasting no screw will give you optimal stabilization unless bony integration either with the cement or with the uh, or with the um, uh, cup surface text class uh, if any one of you have ever visited devos uh, the devos laboratory have a beautiful microscopic sections of acetabulums with cements as well as metallic things where they show how beautifully the bone grows in between the screw edges uh, in between the tantalum wires of the shell and etc they they say that this is the stability factor not your grid blasting or this and that it is the mechanical interlock between the cup material and the bone Ashwini, you have a question. Ashwini. Uh... Uh, no, sir. I, I would just like to share an X-ray and just have an opinion of the Pankar sir, saying sir on that. Okay, if that is fine, can I share? No, yeah, of course, please. please. Sir, this kind of uh, estabulums that you get, sir. Yeah. Sometimes this is all. I I have seen this much of sclerosis in many like a primary. osteoarthritis kind of hips that uh, we get sometimes and they do have a lot of sclerosis that actually cannot be uh, removed just by a reamer and okay. uh, then again doing a cemented hips in these uh, actually these are pretty young patients too uh, so uh, now it becomes a little tricky whether to go for a cemented one or to just keep on reaming and put a jumbo cup uh, so uh, i don't know i have just i'll just share what i did yeah uh, like a few times i if the bone is not i'm not able to actually remove all the sclerotic bone as dr uh, rohit lal uh, was just asked so uh, these cases usually need some uh, kind of bone grafting also as the like the hip center has moved up so i just uh, i ream as much uh, what i feel is good enough then uh, uh, at least 50% sometimes the anterior wall or the posterior wall i get some kind of bleeding bone then uh, we just uh, put some holes in this sclerotic bone like 10 15 holes then we put some a layer of bone graft then reverse in then put a cemented cup and just hope that it all osseo integrates i don't know like uh, can we do that thing or okay this is the case where you need the importance of the pre operative planning i will take it this way i will do a ct scan on this one okay and with the ct scan uh, with with the softwares nowadays actually you can exclude the femur you can take the femur out by 3d orientation blah blah whatever they do have a decent measurement of the cup in the ct this will no doubt a bit bigger but not a jumbo most of these ultimately will find even in your practice you will be pretty good with something around 52 54 something like that in most situations so once you have got the ct scan done at least you have an idea that what size cup possibly we are because normally whatever the companies provide they they have a, a window they give from this to this you do not have these extremes so anyway with the ct scan with the measurements in place you prepare your inventory what's that you think about that i am i might need use bone graft 
where from that draft is coming from it might come from the iliac crest it might come from that uh, neck uh, and the whatever segment of the head is there and if you have access you can think about uh, bone bank and these but these normally do not integrate well with with live bone for all practical purpose iliac crest or the segment of the neck you can chip nibble it into uh, small chips and that so your bone graft is ready you keep large cemented cups no problems uncemented most of them will be having these 52 54 56 the so called jumbo cups and if you really find it is going almost up to 58 you can even talk about you know this uh, what he was talking about this wages and uh, oh, uh, like you, yeah uh, th those sorts of things but as as you this is this has also got a bit of protrusion but once you have removed the neck osteotomy you have placed your homans first i will advise that you use the curettes to clean all the soft tissues and these are the situations where you do not start with a 39 reamer because the cup is very pretty big if you use a 39 reamer you will be bang into the pelvis straight away with the first reamer you need to have some sort of resistance for this particular one probably i will have a start with something around say 43 or 45 and then if it goes up to 50 52 i think i am quite comfortable with uncemented as well as cemented if you have cemented in the sizes of in the range of 50 50 plus then uh, smith and nephew or some other companies will have uh, 32 size heads so this is also something you have to think of to keep your inventory uh, other than this uh, if you are really worried about the integrity of the medial wall you might keep uh, all this mesh and uh, uh, shells and etc but really really speaking i i have gone through these types of cases at least five to six times and i can come out in most situations i am yet to use all these gypsum cells and etc etc with a large head something around 52 54 that's it so we can we can reconstruct the wall with the femoral head yes you yeah, can yeah that will be yeah so the center first, uh, of the femoral head that has to be parallel in comparison to the opposite side so you will have yeah. more bone gap superiorly yeah. that can be made up with that large chunk of bone removed from the neck that can be sized fitted with screws and then you can put a reamer yeah uh, and reference with the uh, transversal ligament Scapular ligament, the yeah. lower limit, and go on increasing the size of the rim yeah. till yeah. So you, we can use then normal cup, normal size cup, opposite size cup, yes, same size can. as the opposite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need optimum stability at the end of the day. Yeah. So my question is now in protrusio, which one is better, cemented cup or uncemented cup? both are both are equally well in the protrusio you have to decide that what you have inside is it an intact piece of bone is it a, is it just a cortical shell if that is there it's a gift for you to not disturb it do not go for that small first reamer that will breach that small shell of bone that shell of bone can work wonderfully well it's a contained bone defect you pack it with bone graft or cement or whatever do everything to preserve that intact cortical shell inside that is your <coughs> make up break so use relatively larger reamers so Only that you peripheral can reaming use peripheral reaming peripheral fits and then uh, as you are using an uncemented you have sufficient amount of bone i believe from the femoral head and which you can put into uh, take a relatively smaller size reamer turn it into the reverse direction jam it and then on top you can put an uncemented one if you do a but cemented in, in, well but in any arthroplastic case you know where there is protrusion which usually is there so you don't have bone graft there yes. oh stop you mean already a hemi arthroplasty yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Bone so, graft. well these are the situations where you need to keep either um uh, bone graft from the iliac crest or you can you can hard, uh, get bone from uh, bone banks uh, we we had situations like this and we keep two or three bones uh, from bone banks keep it and we use that in in those situations one question from my side sir in uh, complete ankylosed hip sometimes reaming when you ream it then you don't get the 
whole shell of the head of the female. The outer shell you don't get a, in total. So sometimes it is very difficult, like whether your reaming has been completed or not. So any tips of uh, that uh, reaming in a complete ankylosed hip? Yeah, I know. What you mean is that the hip femoral head is virtually merged. I mean, there is no plane yeah. to negotiate in between. Right. All right. Well, if you carefully look all around, if you carefully look all around just by placing three or four moments, try to have at least one you will almost in all cases will find one particular area where you can negotiate some sort of carved osteotome or something to have an idea of when that ankylosing is. Normally in those ankylosing situations, the most of the ankylosis process takes place superiorly and posteriorly. So if you look for interiorly and inferiorly, you will almost inevitably find a plane where you can negotiate an osteotome, all right? That's one yeah. thing. So that's where you can use a carved osteotome take that chunk of bone out and then be very, very slow. If you want, you can use a smaller osteotome and take or nibbler or something to take the bone, bone pieces out. And then do the reaming under radiological guidance. You take an X-ray before, keep it in the store and do the reaming in radiological guidance. You will find that at some point you're obliterating that femoral head's shadow. At that point, you know, that you have passed the femoral cortex and you are getting into the acetabulum. Right. And you will get a, a small fat of uh, fat once you enter the phobia, once you are in the center, so that you can know that uh, you have gone. Well, the phobia is actually the area oh. where in most situations we'll find to, we'll, you'll be able to find a space to negotiate your osteotome. Yeah. yeah so, some, sometimes we get the shell of the yeah. uh, head of the femur, but through most of the places it is deficient also. No, so no. That, that's, oh. To clear the pulvinar, the most basic thing one has to do, because by that you know where your medial wall is. And that is the clue that gives you, okay, no, this is the final wall. I don't have to breach. Up to this level, I have to go, not beyond that. So clearing pulvinar is very important. In this situation where you don't know where is what, what is where, you are unable to know where the medial wall, other things are, okay. You can increase the, I mean, size, but medially you can't go. So you have to know, that you have to identify the medial. And in this situation is closed medial wall is, uh, I mean, this uh, cotyloid fossa is full of fibrous tissue and etc. You have to clear it by the first reamer, which goes a straight 90 degree, and then you scoop it out. And once you have got this, you are there. And that is in the, most situations, in most situations uh, it, it will not be completely clueless. In most situations, there will be something left for you. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. I do agree. Uh, yeah. so th that's right. My question is, should we use the osteotome or the curate? Uh, yes, a carved osteotome, a gentle, fine carved osteotome. Uh, go slow. The advantage of the osteotome is it's entirely under your control. Uh, it takes the shape. And also, of course, you can take a curate. Be slow, be slow, take bit by bit. You do not need to take a large chunk at one shot. Okay, it will take another 10 minutes, but take it small, small pieces. No problem. Nobody is going to blame you for that. But you can curate it out. You can osteotomize it out. Do it slowly. Do not breach the cortex yeah. medially. That will just jeopardize your strength of fixation. Um, actually, don't try to lever it out a big chunk because yeah, most of the times these these bones are osteoporosed also they are fused osteo i mean ankylosing spondylitis the bone is i mean weak osteoporosed it's and, not and i will also no. say one thing like if you have the shell like this and your osteotome is going this way do not lever it like this you will break up this age so you rather once you have negotiated the osteotome you just do it this way this way yeah. Okay, you try to do it the other way, you'll almost inevitably end up breaking something. That's, that's the thing I was and, pointing to. And if the situation lies that if the part of the head remains there and all the surfaces are bleeding, can we stop there and fix it up? No. Uh, not really, not really. If the part of the head remains, I mean, what do you mean? I mean, you can at least nibble it out. You can use a sharp yeah. nibble everything to just uh, take it out small small pieces piecemeal take half an hour extra but take it out what's what's the 
there is no way that that can stay you can beat it at any any way yeah. uh, even if even if the head and the acetabulum are totally fused totally fused means yeah. bony and callus complete even then you have to find the proper proper place of acetabulum where the acetabulum lies otherwise the end result long term result will be poor i yeah. i was lucky i had the opportunity only once in my life to watch a surgery of converting a hip arthrodesis into a total hip replacement that was again during my training in the uk and uh, it was uh, professor john robinson from exeter beautiful surgery i must say so there was a continuous trabecular from the iliac wing right up to the trochanter all right so he has cut the uh, neck flush uh, cleared the neck at the back the capsules and everything were all stuck so anyway at the end of the day i am looking at a acetabulum shaped structure with solid bone yeah. there is no like acetabulum you see a socket isn't it so there is a solid bone so what he did so he took again the smallest trimmer so acetabulum is being created so first uh, a little hole then another one then another one but surprisingly when it went right up to the end we found that at the last bit i will say of the total surface area some 20 30% of the surface areas femoral cortical surface is still there that means yeah. the ankylosis has taken place <laughs> if you consider the total surface area that 30% is still joined yes so that agree. was wonderful to see yes so, yes yeah. yes uh, i would like to share my experience sir yeah? so when i was there in aims with malhotra sir he was doing ankylosis sir but actually there was one study was going on in which uh, where complete ankylosis in case of uh, uh, ankylosing spondylitis was there he used to say two things are very important number one you should use image intensifier whenever in doubt yes of to course locate that is point number one and point number two first identify pelvina inferiorly where whatever ankylosis is there at in inferior part there must be pelvina so yes. you have to locate it just identify it and bit then start reaming one question which rajiv anand sir asked ki when we found adequate say acetabular shape but still some bone is remaining there so he used to say ki superiorly and posteriorly sometimes or most of the time in case of ankylosing spondylitis there is complete bone yeah even cartilage get ankylosed so if you are getting adequate bone and you have uh, bleeding also you are, yeah bleeding bleeding is there and radiologically you know that bone is uh, totally ankylosed then so particularly superiorly and posteriorly and in uh, inferiorly you have reached at the pelvinar and medial wall is intact then uh, there you can uh, go for go for it. yeah that's uh, what yeah. some Basically, some of some of the some of the literature has mentioned that and uh, i have come across one case that's why i have asked it so no, in that case you can go ahead basically you have to clear the cotyloid by the clear the pelvina reach the medial wall that way you are restoring the normal center of the uh, i mean hip or nearer to it and that is very yeah. so you yeah. cannot leave it go you have got the whole cancellous surface i can uh, they are fused also so better apply So what what will happen? Your hip center is lateralized, and that is if that is not acceptable. If I can do it, you can. You should do. Uh, uh, I will restore the. I mean, uh, center of the normal hip, and as think, much nearer to it as possible. Look, these types of cases, I will say that as we were as we we can see from our discussion, what makes or breaks is pre-operative planning. these are the cases you just need to sit with a cool of your mind think what i am going to do write the steps sometimes like the ao ao says that what i am going to do first second third uh, what are the inventories required keep it writing and then maybe you just hand it over to your nursing colleagues and everybody in the day earlier so that they also read they know what to expect with your assistance pre operative planning in these difficult cases is the is the most important thing you need to have steps to do 
you need to have adequate equipment logistic infrastructure sea arm um, bone graft uh, wages whatever you can say because we work in a place not like endo clinic they have everything on the shelf okay ye le aao wo le aao sab aa jayega we do not have a second size cup sometimes if you practice say i i work in durgapur it's about say 200 kilometers from calcutta they bring only one size so there is no no uh, backup for if things fall apart of course now we have a little bit of more infrastructure so planning ankylosing means iatrogenic injuries during the surgery that iatrogenic injury can involve the acetabulum that might jeopardize your fixation that iatrogenic injury might cause problems to the femoral shaft you might end up uh, breaking it by some means everybody has done it so you need to keep these rare situations in your mind long stem that plates uh, etc etc for ankylosing cases the difficult cases uh, so that's why i say pre operative planning is the most important in these difficult cases so regarding case which aswini had showed uh, that uh, okay. yeah. Uh, we found that initially, uh, uh, sorry, inferiorly osteophytes is so much so that we may actually get confused that this is the floor, and uh, so uh, you said that in these ki uh, kind of cases we can start trimming with forty three. So initially, I have found that when we are starting with larger reamer, sometimes we end up reaming uh, higher with high hip center. So. Isn't it okay to start with thirty nine, go up to the floor inferiorly, yes. and then gradually start with the uh, large size uh, reamer? Yes. So I it. think what he what he meant uh, initially was that you identify the floor, and and once you have identified mm -hmm. the floor, you have to cover the whole surface, yeah. the whole uh, yeah. hemispherical yeah. surface. Floor or medial floor? Yeah. Okay. Uh, one more question, sir. Uh, regarding the uh, oh, question, uh, uh, on, so we, we need to stop now, no? Well, I'll just <laughs> have some. Say, on, no, no. It's endless. No, no. Regarding yeah. the uh, topic which has been asked, actually there was one question. Uh, Abhishek asked one question regarding choosing cemented or uncemented. So particularly in uh, elderly cases, say 75, 80, 80 where uh, osteoporosis is very evident, uh, don't we go in favor of uh, cemented? As compared to unsemented, so that we can mobilize a patient early. Sorry, uh, just just uh, summarize and repeat the question, please. Yeah, uh, uh, regarding cemented and uncemented in in cases of elderly patient where uh, evident osteoporosis is there, and we are going for THR in those cases, uh, isn't it uh, that doing uh, cemented? Is better than uncemented so that we can mobilize early. We can rely on cementing uh, on cementing uh, in elderly osteoporotic patient. Well, well, well. Mm. The results of cemented or uncemented fixation in osteoporosis same. are same. Same. Are same. It has been. It has been. It has been seen everywhere in the world. The rehabilitation you cannot compromise on that elderly person. to sleep uh, to lie in the bed for another 3 uh, or 4 weeks or whatever when you come out with a hip replacement your your writing should be that mobilize tomorrow full weight bearing unless other problems yes he might have a blood pressure problem he might have a visual problem he might have blah 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 but your fixation arthroplasty is fixation secure fixation of the implants your fixation cemented uncemented osteoporosis osteoarthritis whatever must allow full weight bearing rehab the next day 24 hours even in uncemented there is no place there yeah. is no place yes, yes. for yes. delay even in uncemented i have asked this question to professor zwai muller i have asked this to many many stalwarts that total weight bearing fixation next day otherwise what is the purpose of the operation yeah and the last question is the uncemented sir if the uh, both the screw hold is not good should we wait uh, mobilization or not no if, uh, why the hold is not good why yeah, the whole yeah. whole uh, screw is not good so sometimes it in osteoporotic patient if you have the 
so good yeah. the thickness is not uh, also very good so what dr rajiv has told it sometimes happens so for that what i do on left i mean right side the 12 o'clock hole i just simply rotate bring it to 11 uh, one o'clock while on the left side i rotate it and we can bring it on the 11 o'clock and then most of the time my screws are larger longer in uh, i mean length and the purchase is very good and this, the 12 o'clock which is now 11 or 1 i i usually 35 for the maximum i can get i take the help of sometimes if i am in doubt uh, cr whether i am going heavier this way or that way or not and then i try to keep uh, put a longer screw larger screw and most of the time i am I, I am able to get good purchase of this. I think, yeah. sir, we have uh, yeah. surpassed so, the time limit of our webinar. So I think yeah. if we have uh, any any quick questions, so one has the last slide from my side. Yes, sir. Please go so, ahead. So uh, I will say, can you share, can you see it now? Yeah. yeah yes, 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 yes. We can. So for this is for the junior colleagues sitting in every part of the country that when you talk about hip replacement. you must be having a correct selection of the patient for the surgery the patient selection indication must be evidence based you stick to the standard operating practice principles do not try to be innovative ingenious at the very beginning do not try to hit a sixer in the very first ball i know the t20 is the popular form today but still the best batsmen are those who have played the test cricket well so learn the principles learn the principles and apply it both cemented and uncemented have excellent outcomes don't be carried over by the company by these and that excellent results equal results are available even today with cemented and uncemented it's just a matter of technique and correct application and then you devise your own pathway by learning from people from colleagues from juniors from seniors yeah, from everybody so there is something like everything to learn so incorporate all of them into your practice and have a pathway and that should evolve uh, that take you through through your journey thank you very much for my friends that's the end of my presentation um i i hope you had enjoyed and um, i think um, uh, we can we can uh, okay, yeah. no we we definitely have enjoyed sir it was a very lucid presentation a very nice videos uh, both of them actually Uh, it was wonderful uh, having you on board and share and getting your experience shared with us and answering all the questions all around uh, some nice discussion ranjit sir and uh, ranjit sir rajiv anand sir madhusudan sir rajiv bhat sir rohit boss and other uh, colleagues ashwini keshab and uh, all ashish is also here so we had all uh, around discussions uh, abhishek is there so we are, thank you very much sir and uh, we hope to get you again in future for some or other thank webinar you. because i know that you are very keen uh, teacher and uh, you make very nice videos you and you are you are very much into teaching and learning so we'll be looking forward to host you again in bihar orthopedic association webinars so all yours uh, sarab sir uh, and uh, to just to say final good night to everyone thank you thank you it was quite interesting informative and interactive session thanks to our faculty dr dipankar sen and a special thanks to uh, dr sudeep dr ranjit rajiv anand ji ashuni gorab and everyone who have attended this session i hope in coming weeks we will continue to this series one speaker one talk and Excellent. i hope for the best thank you thank uh, you dr sharaf just one last request from my side could you please generate a certificate sort of thing for this meeting 
because that will be adding to my teaching credentials right. as i we, we, are trying, so we, have, we have discussed this in the last meeting as well online meeting and we are trying to get the online certificates for uh, right. the faculty no and participants and we'll be sending you in due course time we discussed no this problem. in last week as I well i can send one certificate for that i can do that part yeah thank you That's very much well. so dr samsul will help in this regard yeah thank you thank you very much thank you have so a nice much, and good night to you request to our secretary sir madhusan sir madhusudan sir please sir. Uh, final word before we wind up thanks dr samsul uh, really this is very nice discussion i would like to thanks everyone for their time and efforts it was a very educative and interactive session i give a special thanks to dr deepankar sir who demonstrate us very nicely and everything very basic things like the position of the patient how to use the gloves everybody know but he demonstrate how to use the gloves how to use the cautery how to dissect neck excision estabular visualization and how reaming how to make the cement and inject everything the basic things these are uh, these are the very basic basic things and every surgeon need to know uh we hope it was very beneficial for all the blooming doctors in our association and all over the country lastly i give thanks to our respected president dr sarab sir who has chosen this topic thank you sir and thanks to all of you for this nice discussion good night thank, thank you good night everybody thank you sir thank good you bye everybody. everybody good night good night sir thanks a lot sir. sir thanks from iot tv also tv sir thanks for thank being you, here thank you for a wonderful for uh, hosting as always behind the scene man thank you very much wonderful samshul thanks i think samshul samshul is busy from morning till night yes sir yes, samshul <laughs> that's amazing. wonderful hats wonderful hats amazing off, yeah hats off to you thank you sir chaliye thank, thank you sir sanjeev sir sir aap sir good night abhishek good night good night good night Yes. Yes. Request all to join tomorrow for Bihar Square Society meeting tomorrow evening 7 p.m. Good night, sir. Good night. 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 Good night, sir. Good night